Hi, my name is Christopher Whitaker. I'm with the Smart Co Collaborative here with Joe Olson of Foodborne. Uh, so, Joe, what is Foodborne Chicago? Yes. Foodborne Chicago combines social media with reporting incidents of food poisoning to the Department of Public Health. Uh, suppose you're out in a restaurant and you, um, for some reason you contract food poisoning. You suspect you, you contract food poisoning from that restaurant. You should report that to the Department of Public Health so that other people who might be affected by it can, uh, they can avoid the problems you're having. Um, the normal mechanism for doing that now is using the Open 311 platform. So a lot of people don't do this because they don't know that they're supposed to do this. Or they don't think that they're, they need to do this. What this does is it listens on Twitter for people complaining about symptoms of acquiring food poisoning from restaurants and feeds it directly into the city's 311 system. So for example, I go out, I have uh, a meal, I get sick, and I complain to all my friends that I have food poisoning, I have acquired food poisoning from this restaurant. If I tweet that out, people in Chicago will automatically pick that up and on Twitter. And it will attempt to get more information from the user as to details about that, that incident. Where, when, why, how, things of that nature. And feed that directly into the city's 311 system. That's, that's fantastic. So even though, like, when I'm tweeting out, I don't tweet my location at all. So how does the system know that I'm in Chicago? Twitter provides an API to the public that allows you to acquire tweets from a region. So for example, a region would be Chicago. So we can tell Twitter via their public API, give me all the tweets that originated in Chicago. And from that, we can begin processing those tweets down to the relevant tweets that we think are, are important to our situation here. So maybe if you mention food poisoning, maybe if you mention some symptoms of having food poisoning, Maybe if you mention a restaurant, we'll be able to start with the Chicago set and distill that down to the relevant tweets in order to make an assessment whether or not we need to reach out to that individual and say, hey, could you give us some more information about this incident? Okay, so you are literally listening to every single tweet that's tweeted out in the city of Chicago. That's correct. That's, that's got to be a lot of tweets. How many tweets? Roughly, it's about 900,000 tweets a day right. that originate from the city boundaries within the city. Uh, it varies. Obviously, if there's a big sporting event like the Super Bowl or something, will spike. If there's uh, um, uh, an incident involving um, public transportation or something, it'll spike. But normally, on a normal, on a normal day, it'll be probably between 850 and 900,000 tweets a day. So, given sort of this huge universe of tweets, does it take a lot of computer power to draw that down? How do you get from the whole big tweets down to the, the, the tweets that are just about food poisoning? There are a lot of resources available for you to do that. Uh, the first, the biggest innovation that's happened over the last couple of years that allows this to happen is commoditized computing. So, Amazon's uh, last compute cloud, which has reduced the cost of computing to almost nothing. That's the first, um, the first step in the process of uh, being able to do something like this. So take 900,000 uh, tweets and distill it down to what we need. The second emerging technology that uh, this is dependent upon is machine learning. So the open source community, especially the, um, the, the statisticians, have come up with packages that allow somebody that is not a statistician to take advantage of machine learning. They've lowered the bar considerably in an amount of uh, uh, expertise it would take to implement something like that. So in our case, between the, uh, the, the cheap commoditized computing and the machine learning, we can take the 900,000 tweets that occur a day and in real time distill them down to the maybe four or five a day that are relevant to, to our situation. And about how much does that cost you all? Pennies a day. Pennies a day. Pennies a day. Pennies a day. That's that is insane to think about. Uh, so you know, once you have my tweet that says, you know, I ate at Poison Cafe and you know now I feel sick to my stomach. How do you get that tweet to the health department? Okay. 
the first thing we need to do is validate that that is indeed a relevant tweet. So right now, since the project is in its initial phases, we still have a human intervention step in here where somebody from the Department of Public Health goes in, looks at the tweet, and decides out of all the 900,000 that came through today, this is relevant to what we need, what we need here. And if the information is relevant, but it does not contain all the information, when, where, uh, how, <laughs> things of that nature, the Department of Public Health, Department of Public Health, uh, can use Twitter to reach out to that individual and say, hey, we need more information in order to uh, have the Department of Public Health turn this into an actionable event. Oh. So what, what we do in that situation is we tweet back to the person with the URL. It says go to this site and fill out this form. Uh, if you if you want to report this incident, at that point what would happen is the form would automatically collect the information and submit it to the 311 system via the Open 311 interface that the city provides. So um, as Twitter provides an API, allows you programmatically get information from them, the city also provides an API for the 311 system. So it's just a matter of getting the, the Twitter API to talk to the city's 311 API. And once you filter the information down to what you need, getting those two to talk is very easy. Okay. So the, the city's Open 311 system, that's the sort of the system the city uses to manage all of its services? 311 system is a general purpose uh, issue tracking database. So if you have a pothole on your street, if your street light is out, missing a street sign, things of that nature, anything like that, the 311 system is how you report that. Uh, similarly, if you acquire food poisoning, that would be the route to report that. You use okay. the 311 system to communicate that information to the Department of Public Health. So once we get the information we need from the individual, that would automatically get inserted into the 311 system using the Open 311 API, and that would follow the normal uh, 311 workflow for a public health incident. Okay. So the, tweet, the 311 then sends it to the health department, and then the health department decides to send the inspector? Correct. Now, the, the public the Department of Public Health would go in, they would get this information, and they would use that to assign inspectors uh, in a more strategic manner. So, for example, if we suspect the one or two people acquired food poisoning over the last couple of days at a certain restaurants, the Department of Public Health can now assign a resource more efficiently to go out and inspect that restaurant. Okay. So that's what the Department of Public Health is getting out of this, is they can now strategically use their resources more appropriately, rather than sending them out on random inspections. They can send them out on inspections where they suspect there's been incidents of, of food poisoning. Do you know if any of these incidents have actually resulted in like a restaurant getting a, a citation or uh, yes uh, there's been a, definitely been actionable uh, events I don't have the numbers here but uh, we over the, this has been running since April of 2013 so uh, over 14 15 months uh, we've had over 200 cases of documented people reporting incidents uh, that, we've, that we've said that this is a legitimate We've caught this legitimate instance. Uh, they've been forwarded to the Department of Public Health. I believe that's uh, resulted in 60 inspections. Wow. And that is in return, out of those incidents, the, 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 the Department of Public Health's paper trail or whatever they need to do has been increased appropriately. So they've been able to take action, whatever their normal workflow is, on that many events. That's fantastic. And so, do people really respond to, to, from the first, I'm surprised that people like, tweet about food poisoning, but do people really respond to sort of a random Twitter message that says, hey, sorry you're sick, can you help us out? Okay. Let's, let's address the first part of that, people tweeting and being sick. It's very common. Every day there is at least four or five, we gather four or five tweets that mention or are filtered down to the, the food poisoning criteria we have. Now, in some instances, those people are complaining about symptoms. In some uh, instances, those people are complaining about other people having these symptoms. In some cases, it's academic. It's doctors talking about studies based upon that. Uh, so it is, uh, although it does seem an obscure topic, it does seem to register daily within the city. Now, whether or not people respond to an organization reaching out, asking for more information, that's another story. 
Um, initially, we were reaching out as best we could to individuals. Uh, we found that we were getting probably about a 20, 33% return rate on reaching out to people, which is not very good. Um, in other cases, we would be ignored. So what we did is we put in um, to study this problem, put in for a grant with the Knight Foundation um, to study this problem and see if we could uh, do anything to increase the percentage of people that we were responding to. Was it they didn't like our verbiage? Did it? Did they not like to deal with strangers? Um, did, they, did they feel like they were narking on a restaurant? Um, what What was holding people back from from filing a proper report saying that this is um, this is an incident, perception, laziness, whatever? Uh, so we've got some, we get we've got some grant money. We currently um, we held a focus group with individuals across the city to see why people would respond or why they would not. And we're currently in the process of trying to increase that um, percentage to a higher number. The, uh, um, what we learned from this focus group now, many people use Twitter as communication kind of between individuals they know. That's yes. the majority. The, what we found out is people using Twitter to network people outside of their group is in the minority. Uh, there's a lot fewer people that do that. So we've been trying to figure out different strategies of trying to infiltrate, uh, trying to penetrate uh, their networks to get to them more effectively than yeah. just coming out of, uh, of thin air and saying, hey, we heard you have a problem, we want to help. Uh, we have changed a few things since the first focus group. One of the most notable is we now say we are associated with the Department, Chicago Department of Public Health, and that has increased the return rate slightly. So being associated with the city department um, being official, being, uh, we now understand you are trying to help us. That has increased the return. That's awesome. Um, so, like, how did y'all first come up with this idea? This came out of a brainstorming session, actually, with the city. Uh, the city is very concerned with using technology to make life better in the city. Uh, there was a focus group that was put together some tech tech people, and this is one of the things they decided to, to pursue. Could they use the Twitter infrastructure, the social media infrastructure, to gauge what's going on in the city and make it a better place? Uh, how the food poisoning, foodborne project came from that was, obviously listening on Twitter to make life better in the city is a gigantic mandate. This is a very niche part of that, that we felt that the, the um, the technology was appropriate to, to test case this on. And the reason, one of the reasons we had that was because the Department of Public Health is very progressive thinking in Chicago. They love to use technology and like the idea that this was not an expensive endeavor, it was not risk, it was not a risk because it's so cheap to use. Uh, they jumped at the opportunity to uh, take advantage of something like this. So they were our first starting point. There's other uses for this. Um, that we've talked about, uh, CTA, uh, other public safety issues, um, anything that we listen, we could potentially listen to people complaining about on Twitter, talking about on Twitter, using machine learning to distill it down to a more manageable set and put it into the city's issue tracking system so they can be routed to the right city department, streets and sand, uh, for example. Everyone knows you can complain about a pothole on your street. You can go to the website, type that in. What if you just tweeted about it? You tweeted, uh, my pothole on my street, um, and uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, yeah, there's a pothole. And then that automatically got picked up by the 311 system. Oh, okay. So this is actually the first of hopefully many other projects we could do that would use the Twitter infrastructure because not only are people using it, especially um, uh, urban social people using it, yeah. it's also free. The city doesn't have to Use, pay anything to use the Twitter infrastructure. So this isn't costing the city thing anything at all except for time. All the work to this done has been done by volunteers to see if it could be done. That is, that is fantastic. So it's been successful with the food poisoning incident. The Knight Foundation has um, uh, donated money to uh, see if this can be adapted further. So we're very confident that going forward this will be expanded. That is great.
Um, so if I'm in a city and I know I have a three one uh, open three one one system, can I redeploy food one in the in that city? That's one of the things we're working on. We're trying to turn this into a turnkey solution so that it can be deployed in other three one one cities. And there are uh, six or seven large ones in the United States that could take advantage of something like this. Uh, the key would be having a three one one system, which is already a low cost way of routing issues to the proper department. Why yeah. should we have that in place? Twitter just becomes a, another interface on it. <laughs> um, so if I want to get more information about Food Born Chicago or uh, more information on the work that y'all are doing, where should I go? Food Born uh, Chicago Network is the, is the website. Um, you can go there and you can see this in action. You can see the results. We have all our, um, uh, there's a scoreboard there of uh, how many tweets we've got and how many turn into action, actionable items and so forth. So if you go there, you can see this in action. Awesome. And if you tweet to uh, uh, Fubu and Chai, you can also listen in on this conversation as it happens with these individuals. That is awesome.